Um, so my name's Lyndon Rigol. Um, I'm a teacher at Launceston College and also a writer myself and I've published a picture book called Becoming Ellie. Um, I became a reading champion because for me reading is something that has been part of my life um, since a very early age, probably since I was about eight. Um, and ever since then it's been something that has given me a lot of joy but also I think given me a lot of skills in how to communicate and um, and so I wanted to celebrate that and share that with other people. I think that reading is important because in a way it's the closest we'll ever get to being inside someone else's head. Um, so I think if I said that I could give you a magic bowl and you could hold it and it would suddenly transport you into the point of view of someone else, um, you'd probably think I was offering you something magical, but books do that every day and I think we forget how magical that is. And I think it's amazing for us to be able to travel to real places, to imagined places, to different times um, and to different ages, genders, experiences, even sliding between humans and animals. I think that everyone should have the opportunity to do that. So from, a, from an early age, I've always been really, really excited about books, but it was probably at about the age of eight um, when I discovered my school librarian handed me the first Harry Potter book and I discovered that and that really set me off on, on a new journey. I think one of the biggest challenges that I've faced when it comes to reading is that sometimes uh, the term that people use on the internet is they call it a reading slump. <laughs> sometimes we get in a slump. Um, when we've just read a couple of books that might not even necessarily be bad books, but don't necessarily suit us. And so I think for me, one of the lessons that I've had to learn is not to hold on to a book just because I've started it and forced my way through it. Um, if it was a show on TV that I wasn't interested, I'd turn it off. If it was a game I was playing, um, I'd stop playing it. But it's interesting that sometimes with a book, when we've read 50 pages, we think we've got to read the whole thing or we can't move on. And I think one of the lessons that I've learned is that if a book is not for you, then give it away to someone else and move on to something that you will like. So probably, um, probably the book that was most significant for me, um, my favourite book still to this day, um, is a book by Neil Gaiman called The Graveyard Book. And it's a play on the jungle book. It's about a boy who um, grows up being raised by ghosts instead of by animals in a jungle. And I discovered that book when I was just starting to finish school and I was coming into my last year of school. And because it's a story about growing up and moving on and it's also about life and death and a whole bunch of other stuff but specifically because it is about growing up and moving on it just felt like a book that arrived in my hands at exactly the point that I needed it and so for me that will always be a special book and it will always remind me of what life was like back when I was a student myself. I, I think for me, a, a good book is about, it's not, it's not about a plot or it's not about the style of the writing or any of those things. A, you know that you're reading a good book when you have a moment. And I'm hoping that if you're watching this video, you might have had this moment or if it, it's never happened to you, I hope it does happen to you. And it's a moment where you suddenly look up from the book that you're reading and you realise that you forgot that you were actually reading. And it was almost like the story was happening as a movie inside your head. You know, you couldn't actually necessarily say what the words on the page were, but you know everything that happened in the story, but you lost track of time, you forgot to drink your hot chocolate and it's gone cold. Those moments where a book becomes something bigger than a book, I think are the things that to me prove that a book is a very, very special story. So the, the best advice I would give to someone who's struggling to read, because there are times when I've been struggling to read, um, the first thing is don't think about it as a chore. It is actually meant to be fun. And the trick if it's not fun when you're reading is to move on to something else that might be more fun to read. I think usually if we're not enjoying reading, it's because we got the book choice wrong. But the other really, really important thing that I've discovered is that 
books can be read all in one go or books can be read in lots of tiny little snacks over time. And often I've found that the times in my life when I've read the most have not been because I sit down for hours and hours trying to read one book or two books all in one go. It's the times when every night before bed, the last thing I do for even 10 minutes, 15 minutes is to read a book. And I think, I think people try a little bit too hard to read everything all at once. And actually it's something that's really more enjoyable to do if it's something that you do every day at the same time and make it a bit of a habit. So probably the strangest thing that I often use as a bookmark is I will take another book and put it inside the first book um, just to remember where my page is. So occasionally um, I've very rudely allowed books to eat each other, which is probably not a very nice thing to do, but if you're stuck for a bookmark, it definitely works. I, I think it's really fun and interesting to set yourself a reading goal. So every year um, for the last few years, I've set myself a reading goal for the year and I listen to some books and on, on my headphones and I read some books on paper. But for me, that's a really motivating thing to try and keep up with the amount of books that I read last year or the year before. Um, when it comes to reading, I think back to a quote from the writer Lemony Snicket who said, all the secrets of the world are contained in books, read at your own risk. And I think um, if anyone feels like reading might be boring, that's really good advice because books have everything that you could possibly ever want to know about anything in the entire world inside them. And I've often found that a lot of those secrets have helped me a lot in my life, but also given me really exciting knowledge and skills to go on and do other things outside of books and in the world outside. So um, all the secrets of the world are in there. Read at your own risk.